All right, so we are talking about lip mechanisms here. So basically, um, I've started constructing my kit, and I've got one that I'm working on here. And I've gotten to a point where I've got the hinges on, I've got the teeth in, uh, and now rather than putting felt on and finishing this kit and gluing the skin on and everything, I want to install a lip mechanism. Um, there are a couple different types and ways to do a lip, lip mechanism. This is the way that I like the best. So again, I like to curtail all my videos in such a way that, um, you know, this isn't the only way to do it. There are other ways to do a lip mechanism. Um, this is the way that I've had the most success with. Um, so that being said, I, I've got my um, underscore all cut. And what, what I wanted to do in this first video is just simply talk about what this lip mechanism um, involves and talk about some of the different tools I'm going to be using and, um, and hopefully I cover everything. And I'll, I'm also going to say that um, I'm making this video, I really don't know if I'm going to be doing kits of lip mechanisms that are available to people. I don't know yet. Um, it is kind of a tricky install. Um, I'm going to hopefully make this video and then kind of go through it and edit it. And then hopefully at the end of the video, I can look at the video and say, yeah, I think someone, you know, could feasibly do that. Um, but I would just hate to give all this stuff to someone and then find out that it's just something that just takes, you know, more practice, um, and a little bit, you know, more, I don't know, just knowledge of how to make stuff fit into this mask and everything. Um, so with that being said, I just want to go through some of the stuff I'm going to be using, um, in this video and to install the lip mechanism. Um, and then I'll also say, I really like this lip mechanism. I really like it a lot. Um, it's the only one I've seen in terms of how it's built where I really like it a lot. There's some other ones that have some, that the, they have the lip mech and all or they, you know, the lip moves and stuff, but, um. I just haven't seen anything other than this one that I really, really, really like. So that's what I, um, this is what I go with. Okay, so getting started here. Materials, you're going to need probably some WD-40. Um, and just really quick, the WD-40 is basically for spraying inside of some tubing. Um, and so you're going to need uh, some tubing. Now this is like a little bit bigger than uh, the internal, uh, it's like one point five millimeters I think in the uh the actual hole is 1.5 millimeter you just I just buy it in a big roll um on uh, Amazon I believe and I'll try to find the links for this stuff and, and post them down lo below with the video uh, before I post this um I, I use uh you're gonna need some um let's see what's on the tag here it is eighth inch um, this was three foot long when I started. It was a three foot eight eighth inch uh, steel round bar. And I'm only going to be using two little sections of that that are about that long each um, for each um, for each of these little uh, paddles. Now, this these little paddles, you'll need two of them. Um, right now, this is an STL that was uh, modeled by my friend Ian Whitehouse. And it was sort of like my my design, but I, but he was gracious enough to help me um, uh, sort of bring it to life on the computer. Uh, and then these were printed by uh, Austin Dickinson, uh, who's a friend of mine as well. Uh, they were printed on a resin printer. Uh, my hope is that, uh, so people don't have to wait on me to get these, my hope is that I can, if I do make kits available, then I will more than likely just make these um, STLs available to those people um, that buy the kit or some or something or I might just put them out there um, so that people can try to make this stuff on their own I haven't decided yet uh, but essentially it, it's made of two parts and it's it just basically moves in there the round bar is what goes through this hole to make it so that it can operate um, and then there's another hole there where the cable goes through. So let me talk about, so I talked about the tubing. Um, I've got two, uh, let's see how long are they there. Roughly, let's see here. The tubing is, uh, 
I cut about a 15 inch thing of tubing. Now I cut a little bit long just because um, I cut it too short in the past and then I end up wishing I'd had a little more to work with. So I cut two 15 inch uh, strands of the tubing. Um, the WD-40 will get sprayed in those to make it a little bit more lubricated for the cable to slide through. Um, the cables are uh, about the same, about 15 inches. Um, the, the cable does end up being longer than the tubing, but that all happens as you're fitting it in there and getting things calibrated. So you're going to need uh, one millimeter uh, steel cable. Again, I just buy it in a roll on Amazon. I'll try to put the link down below, but I just cut off some sections of that. Okay, a Sharpie, um, cable cutters. You're probably going to need a file or something. Um, definitely sandpaper at least, probably both a file and sandpaper. This isn't going to hurt too. Um, you're going to need a Dremel and a cutting wheel, which you've used probably already since uh, you've gotten to a point where your underscore is ready for a lip mechanism. Okay, you're going to need some uh, cable crimps. Uh, I buy them and, you know, they come like a hundred in a pack. They're not expensive. Uh, you're going to need two of these uh, for the for this lip mechanism install. Okay, you're also going to need, um, I call these cable clamps. Those are cable crimps. These are cable clamps. Um, and essentially it's uh, I'll see if I can show you a close-up of it. Um, essentially, it's got this, this nut that, that loosens or tightens it, and then there's this little uh, metal clamp in there, if you can see it, that sort of rises or falls, depending on how, um, how far up or down the nut is. Um, and then the cable weaves through one end, comes back around through the same side. Uh, I'll show you, obviously, a better visual of what I'm talking about at some point later. You're going to need zap -a gap and some zip kicker, which is amazing stuff. Let's see, I talked about the Dremel. I think that's everything. The round bar, tubing, cables, cable clamps, cable crimps, these two paddles with the, with the STL file, WD-40. Um, I think that is it uh, in terms of what you're gonna need. You're gonna need a drill bit too. Um, you're gonna need a drill and a drill bit. Uh, you're going to need it for when you are installing these here into the mask. Um, and I will try to get you a size on the drill bit. Because um, my drill bit that I use is... It doesn't say the size on it. Let me put a ruler up to it and see if I can... It looks like it is quarter inch. Quarter inch drill bit. So you're probably going to need a quarter inch drill bit. Okay, I, if there's a change to that as I'm constructing this mask for the video, I'll make sure to point that out to you guys uh, later on. But for now, I'll say a quarter inch drill bit. Um, and so that is it in terms of the tools that you're going to need for this. Um, just talking really briefly um, about what this entails is... Um, you see I've got some black lines drawn out here on my mask. Basically, I'm going to cut those sections out. I'm going to pull those out, and I'll pull that out. And then I'm going to use the platform on the top of the teeth. And um, I'm going to clean that out and get it nice and smooth and make it so that this little paddle can sit on top of that. Um, and I want to do it so that the paddle itself is... Uh, sort of flush or like a continuation of the mask and the bridge. So the only thing that'll be holding my uh, teeth into the mask after I cut those out is these edges here and then this middle edge here. So that's another good reason why it's really good to, to get that stuff glued in really well. You can see I've got some um, plastic welder glue in there. Um, those teeth aren't coming out. So that's uh, the gist of what we're doing. Now from there, what we're going to be doing is we'll put those paddles in and then we're going to have a cable that will go through this little tiny, tiny hole here on the paddle system. And then that cable will lock into that thing, this thing that I just showed you. And then that cable will work its way, it will work its way, uh, the tubing and the, and the cable will work their way up around the eye 
over to this area here, and then they will connect to a, a cable lock, the little clamp ca cable lock over here. And so when this jaw moves and pulls, it will then pull that paddle up. Uh, so that's essentially what we're doing. Now on Chewy, um, he mostly has one side of his mouth that lifts, so technically you could get away with just doing it on one side. And if you have enough of a lift, it will lift the other side a, a tinge as well. Um, I've traditionally, I've done this on about six or seven masks, I think. And, um, and all of those masks, I put it on both sides. Uh, one of the nice things is that the little clamp that you drill and glue in here, this little thing, it's adjustable. So uh, it doesn't have to be glued in place. Um, you can put more or less tension on the cable in order to get more or less movement on the lip. Um, and so I'll be talking more about that as I do the install. But that's just a really quick overview of what I'm going to be doing. Um, and then uh, probably what I'll do is go back and I'll start this video showing you a final product. And then we'll kind of start from the beginning and work our way to that final product. So you guys can get a really good visual of what I'm doing there. Uh, yeah. All right. So uh, I think that's it for now. Um, the goal here is to create something that people feel like they can do themselves, I suppose. So here we go. All right, so step one of this process is, I guess it could be several things, but I'm gonna say that step one of this process is I need to cut um, some brown bar. So um, I just need little pieces. Uh, basically, it needs to be able to go through um, this hole here um, to make this thing so that it can swivel and not come off of the platform. So I'm gonna go ahead and basically just give an approximate measurement. I want it to hang over, or I should say out of the hole just a little bit so that I have some extra material to actually dab, um, dab the glue on. So the glue will hold the round bar in place. Um, and then I'll do the gluing process here next. But uh, so for right now, I'm gonna I'm going to cut um, the round bar uh, about uh, about like that, where my fingernail's at. And then um, I'm going to cut two of those, obviously one for each uh, paddle, uh, paddle system. I don't know, whatever you want to call those. And... Um, and then I'm going to make sure to deburr uh, the edges after I cut, um, just so I'm not having any risk of cutting anyone or anything. So that is step one. I'm going to go ahead and cut those, and then I'll come back. All right. So uh, I've got the I've got the um, small pieces of round bar cut off. Um, I think I cut them long enough, but if I for some reason need to cut them again, then I'll do that. Uh, I'm just going to deburr the edge because there's some sharp edge on there. So I've just got my Dremel and uh, a little sanding wheel, sanding drum. And so I'm going to go do that. So I want to actually feel and make sure that I've got it deburred because I don't want to cut myself on it. I like to use a pair of vice grips for this just because they're little tiny parts and I've got big fat hands. So just flip it around on the other side. I got two of these to do, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the other one. Just takes a second.
And that's it, the deburring. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get the next step set up and we'll get back on the video. Just for reference here, size-wise, these are, let's see if I can, these are about three quarters of an inch, maybe a millimeter shy of three quarters of an inch. So, just for your reference, if you if you go three quarters of an inch, I'm I'm sure that you'd be just fine. But uh, the little round bar is three quarters of an inch. Yep. Mm, yeah. Just shy of three quarters of an inch. All right. All right, so the next step is to get those round bars in into these. Um, if you printed them off yourself or if I've sent them to you via kit or something, um, one thing I've noticed about the prints that I've been getting is they don't, they need some sanding first. Um, you want these, to, you want this to be able to swivel freely. Um, right now it's way too tight inside of this little um, base part. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sand uh, the inside. I'll probably grab some like 150 grit or something. This is like 60 grit, so it's not the right. But I'm going to sand the inside of these. Um, uh, I'm also going to sand the bottom of the platform. Uh, again, that's because I want it to adhere well to the top of that um, pallet plate on the teeth. Um, I'm gonna do this on both sets of these platforms. And um, in addition in addition to doing that, and I'll probably sand that a little bit more just to clear up some of the other stuff, but I just wanna sand it down a little bit. It's not, it doesn't take long, but um, I just want it to have a clear adherence to um, the top of that teeth platform. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna sand on the inside here. Same thing up here, I'll sand. Try to give it a little bit more clearance. And then it also, I'm going to sand just a little bit here and here. Um, again, to try and just give myself some clearance. I'm also going to sand the paddle. Um, and that's because I want the option later on of gluing the paddle to the actual skin uh, with some silpoxy. I have not actually done that. I haven't felt the need to do that with any of the masks that I've installed this slip mechanism on. But when I first kind of came up with this idea with these paddles, um, I was I was thinking that this would be glued down to the inside of the skin and it would lift that way. Um, but it just it just hasn't needed it uh, that I've seen. But just in case, um, I go ahead and I sand this down. Now later on, it's more than likely that we'll be narrowing this paddle a little bit, um, so I may have to go back and re-sand it after I've sliced off some of the sides. But I like to get it inside the mask or when I'm actually installing it into the space uh, where it's going to go. Um, that's how I kind of like to gauge uh, how much I'm going to take off the sides of the paddle. So next step is I'm going to sand, sand, and I'll do the same thing on the insides of this thing here. Um, I'll do that on both. And then I'm going to come back with a video of actually gluing the rod into that. Um, it's kind of a little tricky thing. Um, and so I wanna make sure I cover that in detail. So I've got uh, all four, the two insides of the of this sanded, um, and then I've got the two outsides of this sanded. And I'm just putting in there, it definitely is going in there much more smoothly. I think maybe I need to sand it um, a little bit more just for some clearance. Now I'm gonna be spraying probably some WD-40 or something on this. It's gonna help it to be smooth, but I want it to be as smooth as I can without the WD-40, because um, I'm not gonna be spraying much WD-40. The thing I like to do to test to make sure that this is gonna work is I like to slide one of these rods through there beforehand, uh, before I glue anything, and I like to test the actual swivel. So you can see the rod is going through there, um, and it's, I don't know, I think it's probably good um, I'm going to just give it another very, very quick three, four passes with the sandpaper 
And then um, I've also got a little tiny burr under here on the on the uh, underside of the paddle that I need to get off of there. Because otherwise, if, if I ever went in to grab that. So um, if you're doing this, make sure that you're deburring. But this is how I like to just flip and make sure. And, and I want it to just, I want, I want to be able to swing it like this and have it completely like flipping with me. Um, yeah, in free movement, and I've got nearly free movement here, um, but I just need to hit the hit it with the sandpaper just a little bit more. Then I'm gonna go ahead and do the other one, and then I'm gonna show you guys how I glue these in. All right, so I went ahead and I sanded just a little bit more, and then I've got the rod in there, and you can see it's it's not glued in yet. Um, and I'm I'm as free in motion as I need to be um, for this thing to function properly. Um, and so the next step is I gotta glue this um, now. <clears throat> I'm using Zap Gap and I'm using the um, Zip Kicker from the same brand to do that. Um, but I want to cover some of the. Uh, this is a, a very fine glue process. So what? So I've got this metal rod that's um, going through the hole there, and I do not want to get glue actually in the hole. Like I literally just want glue on this outer edge here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a single drop of glue and then I'm gonna tip it down so that the glue doesn't spill into the actual hole. A couple times I've done this, uh, the, the rod is, is not quite as big as the hole and so that glue seeps down in there and then you end up gluing this, um, you end up gluing into it. The other thing is after I put the glue on, I'm gonna continuously move this for a couple seconds while that glue is curing just to make sure that if any glue does get down into the actual like mechanism, that um, hopefully it won't cure in place and then I can you know, spray some WD-40 on it and still get a smooth um, function out of this. Um, I've ruined a couple of these things just on being sloppy with my glue here. Um, I think ideally I could have like a little tiny pin that I just put in there and we wouldn't have to mess with glue at all, but um, just, I don't know, glue is so quick and easy right now. So anyway, single drop of glue. I'm going to put the drop of glue on there, and then I'm just going to tip it over. I highly recommend gloves with this uh, gluing, really with any gluing probably, but uh, I'm going to try to get just like a half a drop of glue, see if I can actually do it on video here. So I've just got like a half a drop of glue there. And zip kick it and then I'm just gonna as that glue is curing I'm just gonna operate this thing and I can see the little spot of glue on there it's definitely on there so it's um, I may come down and hit the other side of it or something with another drop of glue just to make sure that it's on there good. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Just kind of letting that glue set up. It only takes about two, three seconds with that zip kicker on it, but I like to do it for 10 or 15 just because of, I guess, I don't know, that's just how I am. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do the other side. You can see the other side just a little better. I'm trying to, that's why I like cutting the bar where there's a little excess hanging out because it gives me a little bit more of a area to glue. Okay, that time I got a little bit too much on, so I'm wondering if... I think I'm good. Yeah, a couple times I got too much glue in there, and um, it really, really made this thing struggle to move, and I really want it free moving. It's very important for the lip neck. If there's a little tiny hiccup in it, usually the WD-40 can uh, handle that, but just to be safe, yeah, this is pretty good. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and do this exact same process with the other one. I'm, I may, um, I may go in and hit that first side that I did again. Um, it, it feels like it's in there, so maybe I won't, but uh, I may look at it again and just add another little drop of glue on that first uh, side that I glued. But this is essentially like the platform. Um, and so uh, I'm going to go ahead and do the other side, and then I'll come back and we'll go next step. So as you can see, the, 
metal rod. Now I've already glued the other side of this one, so I'm not worried about it falling out, but you can see the metal rod is a little bit smaller than the hole. And you can see that um, on the side towards, that is, um, I guess the top side of that, where that metal rod is, the hole you can see is exposed there. And then the bottom, it's not, it's closer. It's sort of pushed up against the actual platform. Um, and so if you're able to see that, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue the side that's closer to the platform and that'll help secure it in place. Um, so I'm going to do that. Again, just a tiny, tiny bit of glue. Hit it with the zip kicker and then move it for about 10 seconds. But I think that um, I get less glue like spilling through to the to the mechanism there when I'm gluing the side that's hugged up against the, the hole. So that's kind of a potentially de small detail that could make a big difference when you're gluing these. And I literally just use one drop of glue um, and that's it. And I the one that I had mentioned, I might go back and look at, um, I'm gonna take a look at that here now, but that one's good to go. Yeah, and I think this one's good to go too. I mean, it's, I mean, it's not moving at all, so it's good. So those are all set. Um, uh, the next step in this process, um, I'm going to do a new video for that. So, uh, okay. All right. The next step in the process is to loop the uh, metal wire through the hole. Above, just above the paddle. And um, so that hole goes through there. Um, before I do that though, uh, I've actually skipped a step. I'm gonna slide on one of my little cable crimps, or so it's called. Um, be careful with the cable too. Uh, the ends can really get real needly, especially if they get jostled up or burnt up and sometimes getting it through the the crimp is gets it um, gets it needled up on the end I've stabbed myself a couple times it's not really a very fun experience to say the least so now I'm just putting it through the hole above the paddle and Then I'm going to weave it through the other side of the crimp. And I just poked myself. I did that just for this video to show you, to demonstrate how not to do it. So then I've got, this is the setup that I've got here right now. Now I don't want to cinch this up all the way. I want this hole, or I want this to be a little bit loose. And there's a reason for that, but I don't know if I have the words to explain it. Uh, when this cable is inside the mask, it needs to sit at a certain angle back this way. And the more that I, the more, uh, the tighter that I slide this crimp down towards the actual loop, it, it wants to sort of ride up this way and I don't want it doing that because then it's going to be pushing up on the silicone because this will be underneath the underscore and so the nose will be on top of it and it needs to kind of have enough bend in it to sit back but but this is essentially how that thing is going to operate is it's going to be pulling on this now right now it's too loose I want it to be about let's see and I don't I only have you know I think it, I can't remember how long this cable was either, but I want to try and make it so the cable is so that I'm not cutting off a bunch of cable. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to not leave a bunch of excess cable sticking out of the crimp. And um, this, I think this is about perfect right here. Um, so what I'm going to do then is I'm going to grab some pliers and I'm just going to Pinch down on that crimp, 
I'm going to kind of do both sides just to make sure it's secured. And that looks pretty good. You can see that the, well, hopefully you can see, it looks like one side is crimped down. So I'm going to crimp down the other side just a little bit. I think it's already crimped down, but just to be safe, I want to actually see. So that's better. So yeah, so now I've got that set up. You can see that it's functioning good. Now this thing, I mean, it's literally only gonna slide a little tiny bit. So um, I'm, I'm operating it all like this, but it's never gonna be doing that in the mask. To get the lip lift that you need for a Chewbacca or any Wookiee, um, it only needs to lift that, li lift that, lip, uh, that lip up, you know, ever so slightly. It's a very subtle movement. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing on the other side, and then I'm gonna let those sit while I work on the underscore. So I'm going to come back and uh, do the other side and then I'll show you both of them just kind of sitting there and then we'll move on from there. All right. All right, so I've got the other one done. Uh, I've got them both all rigged up, I call it. And so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a measuring tape on this just so you can get an idea of how big my loops are. So you have some reference at all. They don't need to be exact, but um, my loop is... Let's see here, being a lefty. Um, so if I'm just going from the bottom of the loop to the top, I'm in that seven eighths of an inch to, to one inch range uh, on the size of that loop. Uh, and I'm sure that there's like at least a quarter inch of play on that, maybe more. Um, but I've had success with that, those being my relative size of the loop on those. Okay, next step in this process is to work on this underscore. Now I've drawn these lines here um, to give me sort of a guide on where those platforms are gonna sit. If you look at the inside and if you remember the teeth that you're working on, the way these, these teeth have been built so that they have really two functions. One, so that you can glue the pallet on to this inside here. Don't forget to sand first. And then, um, also so that those platforms for the lip mechanism have something to sit on on the top side of that. Um, and so what I've done here is drawn out some areas that I'm going to cut out of this underscore and um, try to fit those, um, those paddle systems that I've just been working on into those spaces. Now I've drawn these guides, but in reality what I may have to do is I may have to widen them ever so slightly. And then also I can trim the paddle down because it's likely too wide. I think on all the ones I've done, I've had to trim the paddle down. The reason being is because it starts, uh, the only the only spot that this mask or that the teeth will be glued to the actual underscore after I cut these areas out is um, just the ending part here on the teeth and then this middle section. So it sort of starts running the risk of, you know, not being attached in enough spaces. Um, so I made sure when I glued to, to make sure, you know, get detail glued down in those areas where it's still going to remain glued. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out these areas and then I'm going to set that, set this in here and I'll take a look at it. You can already kind of get an idea for how much I'm going to have to trim off of the lip mechanism. It's a little bit wider than the, the space that I have drawn. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these out. I may end up using a file to kind of just fit those in there in combination with cutting the paddle, uh, narrowing the paddle a little bit. All right, so I'm going to do that and I'll come back with another video. I'm just using a cutting wheel on my Dremel to do that. I'll do it inside of my sanding, sandblasting cabinet, but I'm just going to use a cutting wheel to cut here, cut here. Careful not to cut into the, the resin teeth and the gums. Um, do that on both sides. And then I'm gonna kind of, I'll actually show you what this looks like when I break it out in the next video. So I'm just gonna make those cuts for now. All right, so I went ahead and I made those cuts. You can see, I just kind of cut straight down. Um, I was really careful not to, to hold that, the Dremel real firm and stuff. I didn't want that Dremel slipping and scarring up my teeth or something. Uh, that could be, you know, a bad thing <laughs> for a final look. Um, but anyway, there's the cuts. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bend these, break these out of here. Um, I'm going to do it. Usually I, um, break them out of here when the glue is not fully cured, 
So I may have a little bit of a harder time getting them out of there. Plus I put a lot of glue in there uh, this time for some reason. So uh, what I'm gonna do is work on getting them out of here. What I may end up having to do is make another cut along the bottom here to get them out of there. Uh, I'll probably do that on both sides because after I just tried bending them, um, they are definitely in there very, very securely. So uh, I'm going to figure out how to get these out of here. Normally I just break them out when the glue is like almost fully cured, but I, I've waited overnight on these ones. So I may have to get a little bit more creative with how I break them out. Uh, so I will come back with uh, my progress on that. All right. So I've gone ahead and I broke one side out. What I did was, and this is, I think pretty important so that you're not putting so much stress on this area of the mask uh, because this particular piece I broke out and it, this it came out and the glue basically stayed there the glue didn't adhere uh, as well as I would have liked it to to this space in the mask um, and so the other side is adhered I think what I did was I left a bunch of dust uh, fiberglass dust on the underside of this uh, mask. So just try to be careful and clean off that area before you add glue uh, in there. Uh, and then what I did was I what I broke it out and then I used a um, cutting blade just to clean it up. It obviously needs more cleanup. Uh, this glue is sandable, which is why I kind of like it so much, along with being very, very strong. But I'll probably use the knife to clean it up a little bit more flatten it out and then also sandpaper to really just flatten off that area because that's where I'm going to be sitting the um, the mechanism will sit right there so I'll get a better angle on that anyway it'll sit in that space uh, and that's what we'll do the lift lip the lip lift um, so yeah I'm going to work on the other side and then I'll show you a finished product there with the spaces cleaned out all right, so, all right, so I have um, cleaned out those areas. Uh, I haven't sanded yet. I will be doing that next. But uh, I just basically used my knife to just sh shave off little bits at a time. Um, uh, now, in all likelihood, what you're, you're seeing this and you're going, wow, that really chopped up the front of that mask. Uh, this area here is surprisingly strong. Uh, yeah, I don't want to drop the mask, certainly not uh, on this, but um, it is surprisingly strong. Now, I'm not going to like test it here in front of you, but I can feel it. It's very sturdy. Um, the fiberglass here is pretty thick in some areas. Um, but yeah, absolutely, it has um, carved out quite a bit of this mask, and so uh, the mask has become more fragile. Uh, that being said, I don't consider this a fragile mask. Uh, but this particular area, yes, I'm going to try to be careful with it, make sure that I'm handling it, not dropping it. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in, I'm going to clean up all these edges with sandpaper. I'm going to flatten this area out nice and smooth here and make it a really good surface where I can glue those platforms down. Um, and then I'll do another video kind of showing the, the step of gluing those in there. Um, but so far, really good progress. Um... I think it was totally fine waiting for this glue to dry completely and then trying to get those out. Um, I will say, though, that I did end up putting more stress on the mask than I like to put on the, on the mask. Um, it, it seemed to hold up fine. I don't notice any, any problems with it. But um, if you're really trying to be careful, then I would put the glue in, maybe wait an hour or something and then try to cut it out that that glue is much easier to get out after an hour it it's uh maybe not even tacky after an hour uh, it gets tacky after like 15 minutes but um, depending on what kind of glue you're using may or may not be better or worse than what i'm talking about but using that plastic welder glue uh oh let me show you that So this plastic bonder glue is what I use to glue it in there. And it's what's holding those teeth in. Well, along with the, the CA glue, the zip, Zappa Gap glue, 
which I put on there originally, but in this space here, and in the front, and then obviously on the other side too. That's the only thing that's holding the teeth in there right now. So um, they're definitely in there and they're not coming out, but I wouldn't want to just like drop this on the floor. Um, you know, that could break and that would be a ch probably a challenging fix. So again, sandpaper, gonna clean these areas out and I'll come back with another video um, showing how I'm gluing in the platforms. All right, so I went ahead and I cleaned out the areas where the lip mechanism sits. You can see it's really flat. You can still see some of the glue there, but I mean, I could just barely feel it. Um, and I think it's gonna be just fine for installing the platforms. Uh, really the same on both sides. Um, basically, I just cut a little piece of sandpaper and you can cut it however you want. And I was basically just running it in and out. Now I made sure to sand all of these edges in here um, as if maybe if, if I went to grab this thing or if I went to grab underneath here, maybe my fingers would touch this. So I don't want any sharp burrs being around there. You may have to go in because it's difficult to, uh, there's some little sharp burrs in here. And this is a great way to be able to get in there with some sandpaper. You could come up from underneath and really sand those areas inside of that space right there all up in in this area here um, but it is important that you do that because if your nose slides against this or something then boy that's going to be really painful so because there, like there's some little fiberglass burrs in there and i need to go in and sand sand those out to see if you can see them in there but all of this area right here was very difficult to get to prior to cutting these out so now it's a little easier to get to it i think um, so i'll go in there and take care of that um, and then I'll move forward and then we're going to glue in the platforms. Um, I talked about just the kind of general uh, fragility of this now. Um, it's, I mean, I can, you know, I can pick it up and maneuver from this, but I just, you know, generally more careful with it. Uh, I guess it depends on what kind of glue you're using. I would use the plastic bonder. That's why I use it. But um, anyway, that's kind of where we're at right now. Uh, Oh, I also used uh, this file. It has a curved side and a flat side. And I went in there and I used this. This was a really handy tool for getting in there and cleaning this out. I also did it up here in these edges, um, just all around this open space right here to get it as flat as possible, uh, as ready for some glue uh, to adhere those platforms. Uh, but sandpaper and the file were pretty key to cleaning out those spaces. All right. All right. Uh, so what I've done here is I went ahead and I glued in one of the platforms on one of the sides. Um, and I, I just wanted to kind of show you, you know, what we're trying to achieve here, at least in this little, in this stage of this uh, lip mechanism install. And so what I've done is I've uh, glued, glued one side in and then what I'll do is I'll go back and I'll show how I'm gluing in the other side. So step one is just to get it get it in place. Um, so I get it in place. Um, I basically glued it down here and it's kind of tricky holding it in place. You might need an extra set of hands or something. Um, but I uh, tacked it down here and then I went around and tacked it in the back and then I um, tacked it on the sides. And so it's definitely in there. It's not coming out. What I did next was I extended the cable to where it's going to lie, which basically is up and around the eye. Um, and then I saw when I was doing that, I saw that this edge of the fiberglass over here was catching this little um, lip, whatever, or, or sorry, the uh, clasp. The clasp was, as it was moving up, it was, it was catching the fiberglass and stopping this from going up. So what I did was I went in and I drew a line and I just cut back on my fiberglass just a little bit um, and I'm going to end up having to do that on the other side too, um, which is, I've had to do this occasionally. And so, um, uh, I haven't come up with a, a uniform cut for the nose, but, um, anyway, so I'm just going to cut it back. I may end up cutting it back just a little bit more. I'll probably sand it or file it back just a little bit more than, than it is right now. Um, just this area here. And then, like I said, I'm going to be doing, doing the same thing on the other side. It'll probably be more, more of an amount. And I basically just keep shaving it back. I don't want to shave too much of it back 
but because I want there to be, you know, underskull holding the shape of the skin and everything. But um, I've also got to give some room for this uh, this cable to operate. And so um, that was the first step I did was I glued this down and then I checked to make sure that that cable was going to be able to flow without getting uh, uh, caught up on anything. So I'm going to go ahead and glue in the other side in the next video and kind of show you how I'm doing that. Um, but this is the, the end product in terms of this, this step here in the process. And this is kind of a tricky step. You'll notice that I've tried to make the paddle uh, as flush as I can with the actual underscore. Um, I can also just sand to shave, you know, have some room to shave. Um, and there is some playroom too. I mean, it's not, you can see that it's, I don't know, it's probably the paddle's depth sticking out, but that's totally fine uh, for it to do that. I haven't had any problems with it having that much play, but you can see the side angle. That way the skin can sit over the top of this and, and not be getting caught up. I'm also having to kind of push back and just bend these cables back a little bit just so they kind of can curve up into that space. Ultimately that cable will be squeezed up in that, that nostril space. Um, and so what I'll be, what I'll have is I'll have, it'll be glued down right here and it'll obviously be glued down in the middle. Um, and that'll hold that skin on there. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll probably just, since this might be visible through the nostrils, I could paint it black, um, or I could inlay some mesh on the nostrils just to make it so people aren't seeing something shiny when they look up in Chewie's nostrils. Um, anyway, hope that makes sense. I'm going to go ahead and glue in the other side and then we'll go from there. Okay. Um, so I'm going to recommend you do this with another set of hands. Um, it's nice for one person to be able to hold the paddle platform in place where you want it. And then the other person can put the dab of glue on there. But I am, of course, always doing it the hard way. So hopefully I got it in the right position. This little paddle has a tendency to slide, but anyway, I got it tacked down. Um, it seems like I got it tacked down pretty well. It's only tacked in the front right under this paddle. And I have to, of course, make sure that I didn't glue the paddle down. That would be bad. Um, but, uh, so yeah, I got it. So yeah, so I'm going to go and I'm going to tack it in the back and then um, on the sides as well so that it's not going anywhere. And then we'll move on to the next step. Uh, when you do this, um, you don't necessarily have to um, have the cable attached to it yet, uh, but it is, I think, easier uh, in the coming steps if you just loop this on there. And then when you actually do attach the platform to the top of the teeth, um, it's I think it's best to weave the cable through the nose so that it's hanging out under the mask rather than hanging out in front of where you're at. Um, so I still need to shave this part right here or it's going to end up catching on this little clasp. Um, and I probably should have done that before I glued it in, but I will I'll go ahead and get it out of there anyway. Um, so I'm going to probably do that next, and then I'm going to show you how to do the guide tubing. Uh, so yeah. Okay, so I've got both of the platforms glued in. Um, the mechanisms are functioning well. Um, I've got one side already done. I'll flip the mask around here in a second and show you. Um, I've got this side over here. Oh, I've got the tubing already glued in. The reason why I did that is because I'm trying to kind of show you what my next step is going to be working towards um, using, and that is using the tubing uh, as a guide for the cable. So as I turn this around, it kind of looks like a mess because you've got, you know, cables um, flying around. You can see over here on the right side, um, what was the left side when I, before I turned it around, the, the tubing is already glued in and what I did was I started by tacking the tubing in. Now there's a couple of little fine points here that it's important to to get if you're going this route and um, trying to do exactly what I'm doing which hopefully is why I'm making this video. Um, so if you'll notice the tubing comes all the way up to 
the inside edge, let's see if I can move it in closer, all the way to the ins the, that top little groove um, right there. And you, Because you want the, the tubing acts as a guide for the cable. And so you want that tubing to guide most of the way in terms of that cable. The, the cable will flex if it's not guided by the tubing. So um, you'll notice too that uh, the tail of my cable is coming out of my, uh, I can't think of the name of these little, um, these little uh, uh, cable uh, tags or whatever they're called. But um, as, as this cable operates, the, the tail actually hits the tubing and it acts as a stop. So depending on how much play I'm wanting to get, how much motion I'm trying to get, I may have to go in and I may have to cut the little tail on this. Um, but the way I've got it right now is it's only obviously hooked up to the, the top half of this, but I've got this opposite end here and you can see that this part, this down here would be where it connects to the lower jaw and, and steps that are coming up. But I, I started off by just tacking that tubing in place. Now, I wanna talk really quick about about the arc um, because in order for this to work in order for this to work it has to have a certain kind of arc to the tubing so what i did was i tacked it and i tried to tack it mm, probably within about a quarter inch of the end of the tubing over here okay and then what i did was i went up about an inch and then another inch and i just sort of tacked it with a drop of glue all the way around and and this is the arc that i have found that works um, on these masks that i make um, they all kind of look like this. Um, when I try to loop it too much more, um, it doesn't quite work as clean. When I try to curve it all the way around the eye, it doesn't seem to work as clean because it's having to bend too much. So it really needs to have this nice, clean arc to it in order for it to work. So I'm, I'm, I hope that makes sense. Uh, but that's what I'm, what I'm gonna be doing here, is I'm gonna, I'm gonna get the tubing uh, step one is you grab your tubing. I'm going to set this down. So step one, I grab my tubing. Okay, I grab my WD-40, and hopefully it's got you got a little, you know, these little tubes on the end or something, little straws on the end. And I'm just going to load my tubing with WD-40. You can see it kind of filling up down there. You don't need to use a lot. I always end up using too much and then it drips everywhere. I'm sure there's other solutions you could use for that too, but um, I like to preload it with the tubing. And then I'm, I'm just gonna feed this tubing over that cable. Um, so let's see if I can do it with the camera on it. Just, so I'm just gonna grab my cable. And I'm just gonna feed my tubing over it. If your tubing is, or if your, I should say, if your cable is catching the tubing inside of there, you may have to kind of jostle it a little bit or turn it as it's going. It looks like mine is catching, of course. There we go. And so I'm just feeding that tubing all the way onto there. Okay, so I've got my tubing on now. And what I'm gonna do, and again, this is kind of one of those spots in this install where it might be nice to have another set of hands. Um, I like to use a tongue depressor to, um, so that I'm not gluing my fingers down. But those tubes, they fit really perfectly right next to each other, right up in the bridge of that nose. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off by putting a dot of glue right right there in that groove to hold that tubing um, in that spot and I'm just gonna move my way up tacking one dot at a time um, and I want to tack because if I have the arc wrong or I do something wrong or it's not having the functionality that I want and I want to be able to rip this tubing off and clean up those tack spots and then try again with a with a different arc now I've kind of gotten good at this because I've done several of these, but um, 
but I definitely recommend tacking first. And then once you get it tacked and you know that it's, it's operating, then you can um, glue the entirety of the tubing down, uh, except for maybe the last like eighth of an inch of it. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna see if I can do this on camera. I'm probably gonna regret that, but here we go. Okay, so I'm just gonna put a dot of glue I don't know if you can see the dot of glue there, just barely. And I'm gonna have to glue closer to the edge eventually, but I think that should work at least to start. So I've got the start of this tubing, and you'll notice, if, we're, if I'm talking about the arc, you'll notice that this cable, just as it sits right now, has a tendency to sit in that arc that I'm talking about. I mean, it's almost sitting exactly where I want it. What you don't wanna do, is you don't want to have to force this tubing down like this or you don't want to have to force it up like that so you really want it to sit you, you want it to sit in sort of its natural arc okay so now what i'm going to do is move up just a little bit make sure you wear gloves when you do this i've gotten glue all over my hands just the other night i did that and it's so annoying okay just put another little spot of glue there do it in a well-ventilated area. Of course, I'm saying that as I'm not really in a well-ventilated area. Okay, so now it's tacked here and about somewhere up here. Okay, now I'm gonna go up here a ways and tack it. Again, I want it to sit at a, a natural of an angle as I can. Turn this around so I can get a better handle on it. Probably about like, about like that. I'm gonna hold it down to the mask. And tack. And so I'm just kind of doing this all the way around. Okay. Now it gets a little easier because the corners aren't quite as. So now I'll tack here. I would imagine that those of you who talked to me beforehand before seeing this video and I told you about how this is a tricky install you're probably watching this now thinking yeah this is kind of a tricky install I don't know <laughs> I'm hoping you don't actually because I'm hope I, I'm the whole goal of this is so that people can watch it and hopefully think oh yeah I could probably do that but I definitely would say that this is a, a very tricky install um, when I finally figured this system out uh, figured out a system that I felt good about um, boy, I, this added quite a, uh, quite a whole new level of awesomeness. And at the same time, just, it, it takes me several hours to get this right. You can kind of see what we're dealing, dealing with here though. Now, what I need to do is I'm going to cut the tubing. Uh, it's, uh, the tubing is obviously too long right now. I'm going to cut the tubing about a quarter inch past when it comes out of this um, underscore. But before I cut it, I want to make sure that it's glued down to the edge. So I'm going to tack it down there right on the edge where it's sitting. Again, trying to just go with the natural arc of this thing. So I've got it tacked down in about five different spots. Okay, I could try to pull on this. It's not going to come off. I mean, I would have to yank it pretty hard to, to get it off of there. It's just CA glued all the way around. You can see the arcs on both sides very similar arc. I actually like the one I just did better than the one I had before, although I've done this side, so I know this works. Um, so I think to me what that says is you have some play. The arc doesn't ha have to be exactly perfect. Um, it's very important that you just tack down and then test it. So like this other side over here, it's all tacked down. And if I just pull and push, pull and push, you can see that thing operating in the front, okay? And so that's all it's going to do. And I've got this whole thing glued down. I may have to add a little tiny bit more glue here in, in where there's this nook in the nose. But you can see um, that this, you know, this is working. Um, and then after I cut the tubing, I expect that this side will operate the same way. Whereas I could just manually operate it with my hand like this. So if I turn this around and you can see, you can see as I'm pulling on this just ever so slightly operates. 
I did also go and I did I did cut that out before I started this video. So I've now cut out both sides. So uh, you may have to go in and do that. I just used a cutting wheel, did, was very careful um, because I don't want these little um, clip things. What are those called? I keep forgetting the name of them. Anyway, whatever it is, I don't want them hitting the underscore as they uh, operate. So anyway, it's <clears throat> that's looking pretty good. Pretty happy with that so far. Um, and this is kind of where we're at. I'm going to clip this tubing so that it matches what I have over here. Um, and then I'm just going to pull that off. Uh, if you have some like, uh, I can't find my little cutters that are exactly for that, but I'll just nip it with some scissors and then I'll just pull it apart. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at right now. Uh, and that's sort of the, the next stage of this. Um, I have to cut this tubing, see if it operates. And then if it does, if it operates, the way this one does over here, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue down. I'm going to just do a line of glue uh, around that whole area of tubing. I'm going to be careful not to put glue too close to the edge because I've had glue leak in the ends of these before and then you lose, you know, it doesn't operate at all. It just glues everything in place. So just be careful. Don't put glue <laughs> in the end of your tubing. It sounds, uh, it sounds obvious, but I've done it. So, um, I think that's it for the key points on that. This is definitely a tricky thing, so I'm looking forward to seeing, um, you know, what feedback people have in terms of maybe how to make this even better. Uh, but I do really, really like this system. Um, these these paddles are like the 11th version of them uh, when we were modeling them, and so um, they have done a little bit of trial and error and stuff, and and I really like where they're at. Um, the only thing I'm not crazy about is. I'd like them, I wish they could be a little bit smaller just because the, the corners of them stick out. It's not anything that hits your face or that anyone sees. It's just just not, you know, I don't, know. I don't like how the edges of the platforms, they seem to see they hang off the teeth a little bit. Okay, so cut the tubing, glue it in, operate it. If it works, I'll glue it in. And then um, we'll go on to the next step. Um, in terms of the gluing in, I mean, I'm literally just going to just draw a bead um, all the way around it. The more of that tubing that's glued in, the better guide it's gonna be. You don't want this thing operating and then some of your guide to be flexing because then you're gonna ultimately, you'll, you'll lose the, the activation of the, um, of the paddle if your guide is moving. So you want your guide to be nice and secure, just being careful not to get glue in any of the ends of the tubing, otherwise you're gonna lose all your activation, okay. Okay, so the next step in the process of putting in this uh, Chewbacca lip mechanism, um, you can kind of see where I'm at here. Um, one thing I did bef uh, the last video is I had not added these little clips in the rubber bands, um, which I talk about doing that um, in my other video. So I'm not going to cover it here, but I just wanted to point out that this, you know, looks like a different underscore. Um, right now, but it's not. It's the same one. I just added the little brass um, clips in there. They're, they're just um, picture holders, basically, for a wall. But again, I talked about them in my other video. So I've got um, both uh, tube guides uh, glued in, completely glued in. Uh, I talked about that in the last video as well. Um, I tested them, or I, I, I cut it off, um, and then I tested to make sure that it's operating. And it is operating. Um, it's not quite as smooth as the other one. Um, if I operate this one, uh, let's see, if I operate this one, I have to kind of get close to the thing. It'll go up and down on its own. This other one over here, it, it operates, but it gets caught at the top. Um, and the reason for that is that there just needs to be a little bit of pressure pushing back down on it. So if you are doing this and you're you're running into this thing where it extends too much and then it doesn't want to it doesn't want to push back down on on the manual operation, that's okay. Remember, you're going to have face skin on top of this and that's going to keep it from going up very far. Um, these are designed so that the weight of the face skin is actually sort of the the weight that keeps this or pushes this back into a resting uh, position. So um, I just wanted to point that out. This one, it seems to operate up and down without, without any kind of 
even really need for the face skin weight to sit on top of that. This one over here, um, it's going to need that just that little bit of extra uh, weight for the face skin. So I wanted to point that out. Um, <clears throat> I the next step is we need to install the uh, cable uh, cable locks. Um, so what I want to do is talk about in detail. First and foremost, I just want to talk about where we're going to put them and then the, dire the direction that we're going to put them. So in staying with our theme of, of uh, laying down the guide sort of in, it, in the, the way that it wants to lay down, which I talked about in the last video, we want to have the same idea with the, the cable lock. We don't want to... Uh, the, the wire or the cable, it's already resting in this place right here. So what I want to do is I want to put the cable lock in that in that natural resting spot there. Um, and I'm going to put it probably pretty close. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw an X right where that thing is going to sit. So I'm going to probably put it about right there. Okay. And I'm going to draw an X on the other side for the, to look at the same thing over here. Okay. And in those spots where I put the X's, I am going to drill a quarter inch hole just right through the mask. Um, I'm going to drill it right through there. Okay, and then on the other side, and I'm just mirroring the X's that I put on there because I can see just ever so slightly through the fiberglass. So the next step is to drill the hole right through there. And the reason why I'm drilling that hole is because on the back of this cable lock, there's a spot where the the bolt goes through the cable lock and it sort of juts out. And so what it causes is it causes, you, you can't really put this down on a flat surface. So what I'm doing is I'm drilling out a hole that it this, will, this uh, bolt will sort of sit in that hole uh, in the divot that you create from the hole. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to sand around this just to rough up the edge of this because that's going to get glued into that hole, in place into that hole. So in the next video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue one of these in so you can see what it looks like as a final product. And, and then what I'll do is I'll glue the last one in um, and hopefully be able to show you that on video. But installing these right now um, is the next step. All right. Uh, one thing that I wanted to mention... Uh, about this mask is how the lower jaw connects to the upper portion of the mask. Um, and and so when all is said and done, there's three ways that it connects to this mask. Um, two of the ways are very easy to undo. This third way with the cable lock is much more challenging and much more work to undo. So uh, first and foremost, the lower jaw attaches to the upper portion of this mask just simply by putting um, the hinges together. And then it's connected by these little cotter pins. I always forget if it's cotter with T's or D's, but I think it's with a T. Anyway, so those cotter pins, which again, I go over this in my other videos. But so that, that's the first way that this lower jaw is connected to that upper jaw is... Uh, those hinges have a little hole drilled in them, which I think came with your kit, and then uh, they have a cotter pin through them. And so that's the first way they connect. The other way is the, is on these brass hinges, uh, or not hinges, these brass um, picture frame holders, and and basically your mat, your lower jaw is connected um, with those. Now those are very like the cotter pins. You can pull the pin out and, and undo this. With the hinge, you can just pull the rubber band off and undo these, and then it would come apart. The reason why I bring those up is because those two ways are those are very easy to undo. If you ever needed to, you know, take this apart, you, you know, you just undo them and take it apart. But when you add the lip mechanism in here, what you're doing is you're creating a situation where you're gluing this cable lock in there, and it's attached to um, the lower jaw, and you're running this cable, you're running the end of this cable through this cable lock. Now, you're not gluing the cable in it or anything, but what you are doing is you're adjusting for, for just the right amount of tension on that cable lock. 
So if for some reason you ever needed to get in here to make a repair or something, um, that that's going to be much more challenging to renew that that cable and get the the appropriate tension in the cable lock. And then the other important thing I just want to mention is that now we're adding a third way that this mask is attached from top of the mask to the bottom of the mask. And I just feel like it's good to have an understanding of you know how you're tying the top of the mask to the bottom of the mask. Um, and so uh, those are the three ways now that, that this mask is attached from top to bottom. So I wanted to make sure and cover those because I just feel like it's important for people to have an understanding of that when you're building this. You're probably noticing it as you're building this. But um, So I'm going to go ahead and drill those holes. Um, I've detached the bottom, obviously, from this top portion, which I think it's probably a smart thing to do when you're going to drill the holes. But I'm just going to drill a quarter inch hole here and a quarter inch hole over there. And then I'm going to clean them up with some sandpaper so there aren't burrs sticking out. All right. All right, so I went ahead and I drilled that side. I'm gonna go ahead and drill this side now. Shaky hands today. I'm just going to clean them up with some sandpaper. Again, this has already been, I've already sanded this whole underscore down, but I just like to make sure that any glue that you're going to you know, be putting on this underscore is going to adhere much more cleanly to an area that's been prepped by being sanded. And again, try to do this in an area where you're not getting fiberglass dust everywhere. I always say that as I'm not really doing that myself. All right, so it's pretty cleaned up. I don't, I don't there's going to be, it's going to be glue all filled in there, so I'm not really worried about it. on the other side. Now, Okay, so I got those holes drilled, and we're getting we're nearing a finish on this uh, lip neck install. So now what I want to do is uh, I need to grab the bolt there. So I always use this um, little fitting here for my ratchet. Um, because it's it seems like it's just the right size for getting these um, getting the nut off of this, and so I want to show you as I loosen this cable lock. This is all new to me. I don't know you you might have seen these before, but you can see the little um, little part in there that um, that sort of loosens up as you loosen the nut. So the cable goes in through one side and then it kind of loops around and then it loops around and then it comes up through the other side. And then you just tighten it down by tightening this down. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna sit this in that hole so that it's in line with that cable that's extending out of the mask. And then uh, we'll tighten this down, we'll get the tension that we want and then we'll tighten this down so that it's pinching down on that cable um, and then I'll have some of this bolt will be sticking out that I will then cut off with my uh, cutting blade. Uh, while I'm gluing this down though, I'm going to take this off. Um, I'm going to take this nut off and take that little, uh, I don't know what I want to call that thing, but that's what it is. I'm going to take that out. And so I'm left with just the base of my cable lock, and I'm going to glue that in. This is kind of nice because it gives me a little something to grab onto as I'm as I'm gluing that in. And it's going to be glued in at an angle. Ooh, bumping the camera. It's going to be glued in at an angle, but I'm going to put the mask back together so I can get the the angle of this just right. And also, I have to sand this down. Uh, so it should. 
it should be a, at some kind of an angle like this. You can see that. It'll be similar to this angle, but I'll, again, I'll put it, put the mask together so I can make sure I'm getting, uh, I don't want the cable to be like bending at all. I want it to just go straight into this. So yeah, and I want to have a minimal tail if possible. So I may end up cutting a little bit. Uh, anyway, I'm going to sand this. Um, and the hole, you can see on the other side, I feel like the hole, I could make the hole a little bit bigger, I think. Uh, but I think it'll work. Uh, I think what I'll do is I'll just take the drill in there and kind of rotate it around to make my hole just a little tiny bit bigger. And then I'll sand this down and I'm going to get those glued in. I'll show you a finished product and then, um, I don't know if I'll show you this one on, on video, but you'll at least see what I end up with as a final glue in product. Okay. All right. So I'm sanding this down. Usually it seems like I... I might just use my, um, this is the general idea. I might use my Dremel to do this. I think I usually use my Dremel. I'm just trying to rough up the metal on the outside of this thing and on top of that bolt, just so that when I put some glue down to glue this in, it adheres to this. That's pretty good, actually. Yeah, I like that. Seems like usually I use my this thing to rough it up, but um, this might be working better. I think that that's this is an 80 grit, uh, and what I'm using here is I think a 60 grit. So anyway, you're gonna do that with both of these, just roughing it, roughing them up, and then uh, and then we'll get them glued in. So all right, so I've got that um, cable lock. Uh, it's not glued in yet; it's just sitting there. But the reason why I wanted to make this little quick video is because I wanted to show specifically uh, this this cable is sitting and that's its resting position. And so as I put the cable lock in there, I want to make sure that its rested position is going straight into that that lock, okay, and that it's angled that way. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold that in place and I'm going to put a dab of glue on one side, then on the other just to make sure it's holding in place. And then I'm gonna go around to the other side and fill that hole full of glue. Um, I'm gonna be careful not to get glue in the middle tray area where that bolt is, uh, because that little flat piece, uh, wherever that is, <laughs> where, oh, there it is. That little flat piece, um, it, won't, it won't cleanly press down on the cable if for some reason you get glue in there. Um, I, I have, uh, I try to avoid it, but I've had to break one of these out one time and I don't know, it just gets muddled up. So, uh, just try to be careful not to get any glue in the tray. Use a minimal amount of glue and, um, better to, better to just make sure it's sanded really good. So you get good adherence with, uh, uh, the minimum amount of glue. Uh, you can get a little heavier on the glue on the opposite side of this, but. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and glue that in and then um, show you where I'm at. All right, so I got it glued in. Uh, it's not completely glued in yet, but I basically just put uh, two, like two drops of glue there and then I kind of held it down while it cured. And then I did the same thing, about two drops of glue on the other side. And I just did it right in the middle and that glue sort of spills out. I think if I did a third drop, it might have spilled over into the plate, um, but it was just enough to kind of fill that area there. So about two drops of glue on each side. Now on the other side, um, there's no glue in here. So what I want to do is I'm going to just fill this area up with glue. Now, um, this particular, like this is, you know, you don't have to worry about this. I'm just going to fill this whole area up. I want that glue to really adhere to this. And so that's it. So I got the cable lock in there. So that kind of covers getting it aligned correctly and then um, getting it glued in. Um, it is definitely in there. Um, just try to, I think the big thing to try to be careful of is just not to, you know, get crazy with your glue and uh, spill it into the plate. But you can see there, hopefully I can get that in focus. You can see there it's clean. There's no, nothing spilled in there. And then the other side, is just 
That's what you want to do. Just filled up with glue. Skin's going to be covering all this, um, but that's that's all filled up. Um, so yeah, that's it. Um, I think one of the other options, I've always put mine on the inside and then just chopped this off. Um, but, uh, you know, I guess you could put it on the outside. It's just going to, you know, be pushing on the skin. Um, and I've just tried to avoid that. Um, but it's sort of in my mind something that I could get away with. When I originally did this, I was worried about this rubbing against my face or something. But honestly, it's nothing that you can't just put some foam over um, or, you know, cut like a little divot out of some EVA foam and then just sort of put a chunk of EVA foam there. And the mask is so big that there's usually a quite a bit of extra room in, uh, you know, for that. So usually, I don't even know if you need foam. Um, I just make sure when I cut off this, uh, the excess here that it, um, uh, that I make sure to sand it down real smooth so it's not any burrs or anything like that. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side. Um, uh, I'm gonna glue that in and then I'll kind of show you a finished product and how I loop the cable in through there. Uh, one thing I talked about earlier, let me get my camera there get still here one thing i talked about earlier is that the hole maybe seemed to just a little bit tight so that that um, thing couldn't sit down flat against this um, but uh, what i did was i just put that same quarter inch uh, drill bit through there and then just as i'm just kind of widen it up just a little bit and then it was perfect um, i can go back in and give it a little clean up with the sandpaper and then I'm going to just attach it again and make sure that I've got that uh, thing aligned to the um, the cable lock aligned to the actual cable. All right, so now I've got both cable locks glued in there. Both of them are completely glued in. Uh, you can see that side and then that side. Um, you can see how the cable itself is not actually attached to it yet, or it's not being clamped by it. But you can see how those cables just sort of in their natural resting spot they they just sort of land over uh, either side i don't think it matters it doesn't really matter if they land over one side or the other um, this one just worked out so that they both land over here if for some reason your hole was a little bit off the other way then you would just loop it through the other side it, it, it just needs to loop back through so the next step is going to be taking this cable and figuring out tension so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be bending this cable around this uh, bolt that's inside of here. And then I'm gonna be cutting off the tail at some point, but you can kind of see how it's looped around. And I still have to I still have to gauge the tension. Of course I'm saying that let me stop my camera here, I'm sorry. So I'm just gonna loop this around. And you, you kind of get the idea there that that loops around and then this little flat thing goes on top and then the bolt goes on top of that which presses this little flat piece down. Um, before I do that though, I am going to um, see what kind of tension I need to have on this because I want to get the right amount of lift on these. So when I'm talking about adjusting tension on this, this lip neck system, that's what I'm talking about, is I'm talking about adjusting the tension uh, that these cables have uh, before they get uh, locked into the cable, into the cable lock, I should say. Uh, anyway, I hope that's making sense. Uh, but that'll be the next step. Uh, again, I'm going to try to do one side, show you how it's functioning, and then I'll try to do the other side, hopefully with a video of me actually doing it. All right, so I've got those both connected, uh, looped through and tightened down. I still need to cut off the uh, bolts so they're not sticking out. Um, but you can see that they both operate. Um, oops, get a better view. Um, if I pull down too far, these ones, they're, they're not wanting to go back into a resting and that's really just because they need the weight of that skin. Um, the other thing that gives you play here too is like if I were just to put loose skin on top of this, um, the, they might not go back into a full resting position um, because really what they need is they need that skin to be glued down to these areas to really get the full, um, the full 
tension in terms of getting back to a resting position. But you can see they're operating. Um, you can go in and you can adjust tension with those um, as you see fit. Uh, right now I've kind of got it set to where it's lifting similarly on both sides. Um, if I were to loosen up the tension on this side, then I'd get, um, you know, a little bit less of an activation on this side. And um, Sometimes I like that. It's a little bit more of a, maybe a traditional, a New Hope chewy look. But in some of the other movies, he does more of a double, double lip lift. So it really just depends on what you want. There is some ability to adjust, though, with these, these cable locks. Um, you are bending the cable, so I don't think you want to spend a whole lot of time doing adjustments, but um, there is the ability to, to do some adjustments with it. Even after you cut this off, you can still just pull that bolt off, readjust to whatever tension you want. But, but essentially, this is what we're looking at here. Um, uh, this is the, the lip lift mechanism that I do. Um, I'm just going to cut these bolts off and then I'll probably show you a finished product, but we've got three points now attaching from upper to lower part of the mask. You got the, um, uh, the cotter pins holding at the hinge spot. You've got the rubber bands holding at the, uh, spot to give it tension to come back together. And now the third thing is we've got these cable locks connected from top of the mask to bottom of the mask. So. Anyway, three points there. Um, I need to cut these off and then I need to paint the teeth and then I can go and I can glue down that face skin or I should, I need to do felt work first. I got my cover felt work in my other video. Um, so this uh, whole lip install thing, you just want to do it before you felt because there will be felt uh, on top of basically all of this uh, interior lip mechanism. All the tubing will be covered up all the guide tubing will be covered up by felt. It'll be that same felt job. It'll just be um, covering up the lip mechanism now. Uh, if for some reason you've felt it and now you're going back, um, it's not a big deal. You know, you're just going to rip out the felt job and refelt it after you put, install the lip mech. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's kind of where we're at. Um, I'm going to cut those off and then I'm going to felt and paint the teeth. And then I'll come back with another video showing probably a final final uh, installed lip mech with the felt and everything and basically a mask that's just ready for hair at that point all right okay so um i've done those i think i've done the three things so i went ahead and i painted the teeth uh, this is just done with some simple acrylic paint i think it looks good but i don't like i said i don't profess to be the guru of the painting of teeth um uh, i haven't glued the palette in yet uh, but i will be doing that um, I cut off the little, um, bolts that were sticking out and then sanded down just to make sure there were no burrs sticking up. I did it on both sides. And then I went ahead and felted, uh, so you can see, um, the outline there of the, the tubing guide. Um, you can see, uh, where the lip mechanism sits. And so all that lip mechanism stuff is, is covered up with the felt and it's in there tight. Now, if you're wondering, you know, how I felt this and stuff, you're gonna have to go watch my other video um, where I do, uh, where I put one of these mask kits together. I believe it's the Tarful um, part one, one of four. Uh, or no, I'm sorry, it's the uh, uh, Underskull construction video for Tarful. Um, so, uh, but yeah, this is essentially very close to being done. Uh, both of these are functional. What I'm gonna do is put this on so you guys can see uh, how it's functioning without the face skin. Then I'm gonna glue the face skin on and uh, you'll get a sense for uh, how it functions with the face skin over the top. This particular mask is going to someone that I'm not doing a finished mask for. So I'll probably just glue on the skin and then um, send it off. But uh, this is essentially what it looks like with the lip mech. Um, this one feels like it's doing really well. So um, went together nicely. And uh, you can kind of see up in there how everything is situated with that felt on top. I always like doing the felt because it kind of overlays and it makes just, it just makes it looks a lot cleaner. Um, uh, so um, I always enjoy that part of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try this on now. Keep in mind, I haven't done much. I kind of let people work out their own padding inside the mask um, because everybody's got a different size head. My head in particular is I'm an enormous human being. You know, I'm like six five 
uh, you know, 325 pounds. And, you know, when I played college football, I had the biggest head on the team. So I have a huge head. It fills out most of this math without very much padding at all. So I'm literally just going to be using this piece of EVA foam that I kind of use as my test piece. And I just basically put that up in the top, just like that. You can kind of see it. It just kind of lines up at the back. Again, I don't need much foam. You know, I don't need much padding for me because, you know, I have a huge head. Um, I've had, you know, like, this is a big mask. I'm just a huge person. So <laughs> it's just kind of what it is. But um, I'm going to put that in there. And then I'm just going to lay down some um, some felt for myself here down in this area. Um, I think other people are going to have to do, you know, maybe double padding up here, maybe single pad down here. That will probably be pretty common just because of... Um, uh, general size of your head but you know it's really just for you to figure out like people like to use those helmets those fit in here um the the ones with the cinch up thing um i've never tried one but it, it fits i have one that i've put in there and it fits and um sometimes they order you know like the helmet kit stuff and situate stuff in there but um that's i just kind of leave that up to people to figure out on their own um so anyway, I'm going to try this on and give you guys a chance to see how it's operating from the perspective of me wearing it and how those lip mechs um, function uh, without the skin on. All right. All right. So here I've got the mask on. You can see I just use a little little thing here in the bottom. Um, and I've got that pad up in the top. So up here, up here. <laughs> um, and uh, I'm just going to show you what it looks like. Basically, I'm just operating on my jaw and you can see those things lift. They're pretty responsive. You can see, um, you can see how they don't go down to a full resting position. Um, I can still adjust tension, but what I'm waiting to do is I'm waiting to glue the skin on because that's going to give that little bit of push down that these need in addition to gluing some of these areas down around where that nose is. It's going to have a tendency to want to push these down into a rest. And it's really just so, such a little amount of uh, push down that they need. Um, so having done a bunch of these, I have a feeling that it's going to be pretty close to right on. Um, and after the skin is on, I may go in and do some tension adjusting. Um, but, uh, this is basically what we're, where we're at. push down all right all right so last video for this set on how to install a lip mechanism hopefully you guys can hear me okay through the mask obviously i've got the face skin glued onto this mask um, and everything done the only thing i haven't done for this particular mask is i haven't put a strap yet on the back now normally i think you're going to need a strap but like i said in my last video since i have uh, a huge head i don't even really need a strap that that much um it, it's really not going to help me a ton um, because it's already firm enough on my head to get the lip mechanism to operate um, so i'm just going to go ahead and show you that here but you can see the skin lift um, and i'm going to talk a little bit about where i glued this down um, with the lip mech um, and so you have kind of an idea that um, so anyway, uh, here's the uh, lip mechanism operating with just the face skin glued on top. You can see that it comes back down in place because of the weight of that skin. Um, also, a couple more times just so you can kind of see it. The thing I really like about it too is it it has like a slow operation too, you know, you don't, it's, it's not like you just press down with your mouth and then it lifts all the way up. Like you can get a little bit of a lift or it has a variable lift. So I really like that. The paddles seem to really work well um, and durable. I mean, I've done this like a thousand times with this mask already because I've just been wearing it and it seems to be holding up and durable and everything. And um, the liner that I got inside there works really well. So I'm just really happy with it. Um, uh yeah so yeah i don't have the palette glued in yet because um some people don't even like using the palette they can get their mouth close enough to where when you open it that's the palette you see so 
Um, it really just depends on what you want, but I, you know, I send the palette with the masks anyway that I do. Um, uh, yeah. So, uh, I think that is it for this video. Appreciate you guys, uh, tuning in and seeing how this is done. I really hope that you guys view this video and think that this is something you can do. I'd like to make this kit available, but I want to make sure that, um, you know, that it's not something that people are going to fumble with and then not, and not feel comfortable installing. Like I said, I really like it a lot, but um, it, there's definitely some tricky points to the install, which I tried to cover in this video. Uh, but I appreciate you guys tuning in. I appreciate you watching. And uh, hopefully uh, next one I should be making like a dreadlock video for those of you that are working on Tarful. Anyway, hopefully everybody had a, a great time watching this, and thanks for tuning in.